Hello, everyone. Welcome to this tutorial on understanding data chunking. My name is Lina Estupiñan Suarez from the Max Planck Institute for Biogeochemistry. And in the following slides, I will introduce you to the main concepts of data chunking. We are also going to compute some statistical metrics for large graded data sets to learn the main differences between different data chunking settings. At the end, I wrap up with the final remarks. We all are aware that data is increasing continuously. This is also the case in the earth science. Products from remote sensing and climate models are produced at higher and higher spatial and temporal resolution. These data sets are hosted in the cloud and they have to be accessed efficiently. Also, they do not fit into memory. The way how these data sets are stored, the chunking is crucial for the computational performance when accessing, loading, and processing data. If you want to learn more about it, check out this link. To understand the relevance of data chunking, we are going to compute the mean and the median of the air temperature data set from ERA5. Importantly, we will do it without loading the whole data set into memory. For this, we have prepared two files from the, from the same data set, but with two different chunking configurations. The first file, we call it the map chunking, and it aims at fast access to spatial layers. And this is the most used way of storing spatial temporal gridded data sets. The second file, the box chunking, aims at intermediate access to both the spatial and temporal dimension. We work with Julia and we start loading the libraries. You, we use NetCDF for loading the data. This arrays, there is a collection of functionalities to handle chunkings and the statistics for our analysis. Then we use the artifact command to download the data from a server. And now we load the files, metadata, and the data using the, the NetCDF library. As usual, we start with the visual inspection of our input files. Here, we are plotting the first date of our data set. This is early January in 1979. As we expect, we have low temperatures in the boreal winter and high temperatures in the Austral summer in the Southern Hemisphere. We also do a visual inspection of time series, and this is a pixel at the crossing between the equator and the prime meridian. Here we observe the air temperature seasonality of 10 years. After getting familiar with our data sets, we are having now the chunks overview. For this, we are going to load the chunk indices from both input files. We use the each chunk command uh, from the this array library to load these indices. Later, we use the first a chunk to assess the indices of both the spatial and the box chunking. Here we observe that uh, for the first and second dimension of the spatial chunking, we are having the same values than the number of pixels of a gridded uh, global grid at 0 0.25 degrees. This is 1,440 pixels on the longitude and 720 on the latitude for time step. On the other hand, the indices for the first box chunk are 90 by 90 by 256. In other words, this is 90 pixels uh, on the longitude, 90 pixels on the latitude and 256 time steps. This is the graphical representations of our chunking files. On the left side, we have the spatial chunking. We have map layers for five time steps. On the right side, we have the box chunking, and each box has the dimension 90 by 90 by 256. One of the most important concepts when working with data chunking is data access performance. Here, we are going to compare the access of the for from for both uh, files for the spatial chunking and the box chunking to the time dimension and the spatial dimensions. 
we start with the spatial chunking. Here we observe that accessing one map layer, the spatial dimension takes just only milliseconds. While if we want to access time series of one pixel, it takes around 30 seconds. Here also for this uh, timing, for the timing of temporal access, we need to be a little bit cautious because also we are having the compilation time. In this case, it's 0.16%. It's a very low value, less than one second, and it's negligible for these comparisons. We do the same for the box chunking. And what we observe is that accessing the spatial dimension is slower than accessing the temporal access. The differences uh, between both are very clear. The spatial chunking has a very efficient access to the spatial dimension, but sacrifices the access to the temporal dimension while the box chunking offers a good compromise if we need to access both dimensions. Now I want to recap the first part of the talk. And I want to highlight that the time required to access the geospatial data and time series is highly depending on the chunking configuration. In this example, the spatial chunking can access the spatial layers about 100 times faster than time series. On the other hand, the box chunking offers a good compromise when analysis have to be carried out at both the temporal and spatial dimension. Now we continue with the statistical computation. And here we need to be aware that the mean and the median have different computation requirements. Briefly, the mean is a cumulative operation, while the median requires that the whole data is loaded, sorted, and then the median is computed. We start with the mean per pixel, and what we observe here is that we are having similar computation time for both chunkings. So we are taking between 33 to 36 seconds to compute the mean of 30 years data sets. And this is the output of our computation. We are observing a, a multi-annual mean for more than 30 years of data. Now we compute the mean, but for time step. And also we found something similar. The computation time between both uh, chunkings are quite similar, 33 and 35 seconds, respectively. Here we observe uh, 10 years time series of the global mean for the Earth. I want to give you some 10 home messages now about the mean computation. And is the computation time of the mean is similar regardless of the chunking properties and used access. So it's uh, regardless of the if we are working with the spatial dimension or with the temporal dimension. This is due to the fact that the mean is a cumulative operation, but also because we are using a library that handles properly the data chunking. To finish, we are going to compute the median by pixel. And this process is much more uh, computational demanding so we are doing a subset of four pixels. We observe here that the computation of the median is very slow. It takes around two minutes for four pixels when we use the spatial chunking, while when we use the box chunking is less than one second. I want to clarify that the code used in, in, in these lines uh, it's not the most efficient way to loop through your data because we are here reading one pixel and then the following pixel using a for loop. We use it for demonstrative purposes, but uh, you will find more efficient way for looping through your data sets. There is another approach to do it uh, more efficiently and is if we read the data by blocks. 
So we read first one block, we compute the median, and then we continue with the next block. This is actually with a good chunking uh, size uh, we'll do from the beginning. Now we are computing the median for the entire data set. And what we observe is that it takes around uh, four minutes to do it when we are using the spatial chunking, while it takes around one minute, 20 seconds uh, for the box chunking. My final remarks is that chunking is critical for efficient data access when the entire data set cannot be loaded into memory. Calculations such as the mean uh, are not affected by chunking if an appropriate library and code are used. But always to ensure optimal performance for all operations, it's appropriate that the chunking size is choose considering the type of analysis and the required dimensions that you will need. With this, I want to end and thank you for watching.